Um, today, we're going to be talking about optimizing hotel operations with IoT solutions. This is the first time that you have joined uh, one of our webinars. My name is Eloise. I am your host for today, and I'm the editor of Boutique Hotel News. And we're an online multimedia publication which covers the global boutique, lifestyle and luxury hotel industries. As you can see from your screens, we have two sponsors for today's episode, uh, first of which and our series sponsor, which is uh, Agilisys, a cloud-based hospitality software company. And we have Paul Finch on the call today to provide um, a short introduction. So, Paul, this is my moment to hand over to yourself and welcome. Lovely. Thank you very much, Eloise, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, I'd just like to say a few words, uh, a bit of a background to Agilisys and you know, setting the scene, I hope, for today. Uh, Agilisys is delighted to be the sponsor of this webinar. So as a company that is 100% focused on technology within the hospitality industry, Agilisys has been a leader in the debate on how powerful data can be and will be in helping hotels advance their guest experiences and optimizing their own operations. We should all remember that technology touches all parts of our lives. And as a hotel guest, we increasingly expect the same or even better technological experiences than we have in our own homes. So the potential for a hotel we feel is enormous through the sensing and collecting of data that can enable greater guest personalization, the automation of processes and tasks to make operations more efficient, and perhaps the biggest potential and, and the one closest to Agilisys's heart is the ability through data to increasingly monetize the guest and drive up revenue beyond the room. So again, we're delighted to be sponsoring this fascinating topic this afternoon and I very much look forward to listening to the debate, which I hope you all enjoy. So thank you, and back to you, Eloise. Thanks a lot, Paul. And um, further details about Agilisys, including some contact details, have been popped into the chat. I would encourage you to connect and find out more. Secondly, on to Ruckus, our episode sponsor. And Ruckus is a provider of wired and wireless networking equipment. And today we have a short video to play for you. Ruckus solutions deliver operational efficiencies that are crucial for maintaining profitability and enhancing guest satisfaction. Improving staff safety and inventory management with location tracking and panic button solutions. Boosting employee efficiency to maximize time utilization for enhanced customer service. Every hotel system operating seamlessly under a single network for unified workflows and simplified management. Ruckus solutions empower hospitality businesses to reduce their environmental footprint, conserve resources, and contribute to a more sustainable future. Reducing energy costs with IoT-enabled thermostats for sustainability and enabling remote monitoring and control of building systems and equipment. Designed to support current and future standards, protocols, and technologies, all fully backed by the expertise and support of a leader in hospitality solutions. Optimize every hotel with always-on Wi-Fi, smart technology, service efficiency and customer loyalty, and sharing their experiences with others, so you can improve occupancy rates, rev par, and guest satisfaction scores. It's time to differentiate your property, minimize costs, and drive revenue performance. Unlock the future of hospitality with Ruckus Solutions. And once again, further details about Ruckus have been popped into the chat, including some contact details for you. Um, let's meet our speakers for today and to segue nicely from one video right into a physical human person, I'm going to ask Stephen to lead the introductions first. So Stephen, over to yourself, please. Thank you, Eloise. Uh, my name is Stephen Bronken. I'm the uh, head of global hospitality here at Ruckus Networks. Um, I've been in hospitality for, <clears throat> excuse me, for over 17 years. 
and have been selling ruckus solutions and providing those solutions to clients in hospitality essentially ever since. So uh, it's, uh, of course, Ruckus is the leading manufacturer of wired and wireless network uh, equipment for the industry. Uh, we've always been known for our excellent products, our excellent Wi-Fi, and our ex excellent networking. Uh, of course, now we're expanding even further beyond that, branching into heavy, into IoT, into cloud management, uh, into AI, and into, you know, really getting into further the world of hospitality and, and connecting with all those different systems through common APIs and and, uh, and standard product protocols. So really really happy to be here looking forward to an excellent discussion and really trying to uh you know spread the gospel of fantastic wi-fi that ruckus networks provides thank you stephen um and vibu over to yourself please welcome thanks eloise uh vibu Gant from rbh hospitality management we are a uk-based hospitality management company and we operate just over 50 hotels across the uk I look after all things technology and information systems for the group, and we work with multiple vendors, including Ruckus, uh, for our networks, IoT solutions, and for our technology setups across the portfolio. I'm really happy to be here on this webinar with you. Super. Nice to have you, Vibhu. Uh, KD, I can see you next on my screen. Welcome and over to you. Thank you, Eloise. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Kadi Sadlo, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Hotel Buddy. I'm an ex-hotelier with uh, more than 17 years of experience in the hospitality industry. Um, and Hotel Buddy is a self-service solution for independent hotels and hotel groups. And we provide the hotels with a web-based solution that enables them to digitalize their guest journey. So their guests can check in online, order services, chat with the hotel staff, open uh, hotel room doors, um, check out, uh, cast their um, mobile phones to the hotel TV and, uh, and much more. And we utilize IoT technology uh, that enables us to open the hotel room doors without the need for the guests to download an app. So great uh, to be here. Thank you, KD. Um, and last but not least, Sam, over to you and welcome. Hello, I'm Sam Schuurkes. I'm co-founder of City Hub, which is a revolutionary hotel concept. Actually, we kind of fill in the gap between hotels and hostels. So we have our own pods, which we call Hub, which we uh, developed. Uh, and we have shared bathrooms, so we're kind of in between there, and uh, it's a very luxury experience. At the same time, we also built a lot of uh, high-tech solutions to make the whole experience automated and uh, offer extra guest experience by city hosts who are, uh, let's say, our reception. We have currently three hotels in, uh, in Europe, and we're rolling out, and, and at this moment, three other hotels are uh, on the go, and uh, we hope to uh, reach... 10 hotels in the next four years. So let's see where we're going to go. Best of luck, Sam, and I'm um, great to have you here. And I will add that all the panelists' um, LinkedIn profiles have been popped into the chat. I do encourage you all to connect um, and carry on this conversation after today's webinar has finished. To provide a very quick overview of how today's session is going to run, we'll spend around 45 minutes chatting with our panelists today, followed by some time to take any questions from the floor. So please submit any questions for our speakers using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screens, and I will get round to asking those where appropriate. Um, and a reminder that today's session is being recorded and everybody that has registered will receive a copy of that recording within two days time. To provide some background to today's conversation, um, according to Starfleet Research, which is a survey that came out uh, last month, I believe, 282 hotels and resorts, which is 76% of the survey group, have implemented IoT technology for smart guest engagement and security systems. Additionally, there is a growing trend in sustainability solutions that use IoT technology, with almost two thirds of hotels having deployed energy management solutions, connected lighting, and water monitoring applications to improve energy efficiency and reduce waste. The second um, 
headline on your screen um, about how IoT upgrades are the smart way to drive profitability. Uh, this headline is taken from a, a research um, paper by the International Data Corporation, which predicts that by 2027, 55% of hospitality and travel organizations will invest in AI and or IoT powered devices to reduce waste by 20% and lower costs by 15%. And the anticipated gains are so substantial that by 2029, nearly half of hospitality organizations are expected to earmark as much as 25% of their IT budgets for automation of services and processes aiming to increase efficiency by 85%. On the next slide, just to show the, um, the, the worth of the sector when it comes to smart hospitality, um, a report from the SNS Insider projects that the smart hospitality market is anticipated to increase at a compound annual growth rate of 30% from 2024, so from this year to 2031. And that's expected to reach a US dollar, 143.16 billion by 2031. And North America is the leading market of smart hospitality and it is expected to hold that position throughout the forecast period. Now, what are the key drivers that are spurring this growth? Um, three points that I want to make, all taken from this SNS Insider report. Number one, increasing 5G adoption in the hospitality industry. Second, increasing consumer desire for guest-focused, hyper-connected personalization and real-time tailored experiences, both of which, to our third point, which is leading to interest in IoT devices and demand for hospitality software and services, all of which are balanced against the need to lower operational expenses. A lot to digest, um, but stay tuned as we're going to dive into this a lot deeper whilst we talk about optimizing hotel operations. And I want to kick off with a question to Vibhu, if I may. I would like to learn about very specific, concrete examples of how RBH is or has utilized IoT solutions at its, pro uh, at its properties. Okay. So Eloise, uh, we at RBH work across multi-brand properties. So we work with uh, with global brands like IG, Hilton, Marriott, Wyndham, and Accor as well. And we work with all these brands and we have put in common platforms, which we are starting off with. The first one is probably the in-room energy management. We have just been, uh, we have been in the second year of the rollout uh, at the moment. And uh, it is basically replicating what the sensors technology with IoT sensors in the bedrooms to look at occupancy levels, to then look at the physical presence in the bedroom. And that, that in turn controls the lighting, the air conditioning, any appliances in the bedroom, including the TVs. And that allows us to do some significant uh, inroads towards our ESG policy. It really helps our environmental part of the ESG uh, condition. And in the first year alone, at one of the examples on Plaza of Docklands, in the first year alone, we have had a savings just over of, or just over 50K uh, by deploying that technology and that's British pounds. Uh, so that's the first example. And we have the rollout phase of that. The second one, which we have started a very good pilot on, is to actually have reception-less hotels. So we have the Corner Hotel in London, where we have eliminated the need for the traditional reception desk. Uh, and that has been enabled entirely because of the IoT solutions that we have in the hotel, which is direct room check-in. It has pods and, and a kiosk-based solution for international travels who potentially might not have access to the internet during the travels. Uh, and that covers a lot of kind of resource requirement really reduces in that scenario. And it helps that our associates at the hotel can then actually engage in meaningful guest service instead of hunting down over a PC, checking in and, and doing the transactional part of guest service. It just allows the, the team to do more in terms of meaningful guest service. And that is probably the two prime examples. 
after that, we have also utilized or starting to utilize a lot of the IoT technology in our kind of F and B areas when it comes to stock monitoring, stock control. Gone are the days when you're doing manual, manual stock counts. Uh, those things are starting to come through as well. And in our food preparation area, you know, just just uh, the, uh, the management of uh, temperature in the refrigeration area, uh, within within the cooking range, being being able to. Uh, put the extracts on and off, depending on what's being cooked and what the temperature in the entire kitchen area is. And those are the prime examples, which are kind of real life examples where we are seeing IoT really coming to maturity. And can you talk to me, Vibhu, about um, the measurable impact that um, adding these solutions into said properties, what impact that is having on not just efficiency, you highlighted that your staff members are, are now able to interact and engage more with um, with guests, but also cost savings. Cost savings, uh, I think predominantly it's the cost of utilities. Uh, I think everybody on this call uh, would, would be aware utilities cost have really skyrocketed over the last two years, two and a half years. And that's the biggest saving. If you look at the commercial uh, return on investment, it's the it's a saving on utilities that is the biggest driver. And after that, uh, it comes down to a measurable savings in the region of a adopted hotel, a mid-scale hotel, let's say 100 bedrooms uh, or more, you'd be looking to save anything in the region of between 55 to 60K in the first year alone. You know, And, that, and if you look at one of our examples, over a 10 year period, we have we have worked out you would be saving the big savings come at the at the onset when the solution gets delivered and then they, then they kind of plateau off and you've got the situation in place, you've got the major savings made. Then you're looking at over a 10 year period, you're easily touching the 400 k mark in savings when with all the systems adopted into that environment. And it depends on the scale. If you're if you're using if you're having a hotel operation that has leisure, spa. The savings are huge and then in the smaller hotel which is let's let's say 60 70 bedroom with very limited f and b there's a reduced saving but there's still a big saving as a number mm. thanks Vibhu. um same question to sam actually because i understand that city hub has actually built its brand around the technology um it's a slightly different model um to to um RBH as a third party management company. Um, so Sam, can you provide examples of what IoT features you're using? And uh, the follow up question on what um, impact is that having on efficiency and cost savings? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, we, we implemented definitely a lot of those solutions. In in its core, City Hub is already a concept that was developed to be kind of sustainable or we're super efficient in space. And that's how we already save the most uh, cost we actually have uh, a 83 percent lower uh, uh, co2 uh, emissions than the average hotel in europe so it's already in its core uh, built like that but um so yeah we have uh, a number of systems some are more experience related and uh, others are more cost uh, drivers also and we have our own uh, bar <laughs> system which is connected to a wristband so people when they check in they activate their wristband, which is connected to our bar. Uh, there's a draft beer, there's coffee. There's a, it's, it's it's fully uh, decorated as a normal bar, but there's no bartender. You uh, you do it yourself, and it's connected to uh, the PMS system, and aut automatically uh, everything is being charged uh, on the account, which of course uh, saves a lot on uh, staff because there is actually a bar there. It fully experiences as a whole bar, but actually it's not. There's just a, a self service system but in experience um, we built our own check-in kiosk uh, which is also connected to our uh, uh, city host which is actually our reception let's say so the moment people check in we get the personalized data and the host sees that and can automatically interact uh, personalized so instead of creating a less personal personal experience the the, the check-in actually makes it uh, uh, enables us to have a more personal interaction uh, with the guest and this, of course, also uh, saves a lot on uh, staff, but at the same time, it creates uh, an experience. And then we have our own app in which the app uh, is uh, 24 hour. Uh, the guests are 24 hour connected to the okay. city hosts so they can ask them all kinds of questions. So there's no 
a reception in a sense that only on check-in and check-out or whenever a guest arrives there physically can uh, be helped. No, they're actually, it's a continuous process right now. So it's uh, even the moment they make a reservation and from that moment on, they can constantly uh, interact with our uh, city hosts. And this app also is the control of the room. So in our <clears throat> new hotel also for the temperature and control and the lights controls and we have a special experience so we have like a fully addressable led lighting system so we can change the atmosphere in the hub with different colors different atmosphere we have like for example a northern light and then uh, you know next hotel is going to be in iceland so uh, then we can also artificially show it uh, in the room and well, this, of course, redux, uh, reduces the construction cost because instead of putting a panel in every room, uh, uh, you can just uh, uh, do it once and then do it for all hotels at the same time. And this also makes sure that um, that you can update it when, the experience, when you want to improve the experience. You don't have to actually physically update uh, any systems there. So that makes it uh, a lot easier. And... Um, yeah, I think that uh, our next step actually is uh, is that everything is going to be in the cloud. So we're going to have one VPN for all all hotels. I guess uh, that's something that also for uh, systems like Rukas can uh, work uh, well uh, well with. You know, the, the especially uh, kind of modern Wi-Fi systems they allow that, and then uh, we won't have a server anymore. So all our mm -hmm. systems will be in the cloud, connected to one network in all hotels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically it. There's definitely a conversation to be had here around um, investment uh, because you've developed some of these solutions yourself, Sam, rather than outsourcing yeah. and, and partnered with what's already out there in the market. Um, yeah. So with that in mind, how how are you measuring the impact on such things as efficiency and cost savings when you've taken that upfront investment to developing the tech yourself? Yeah, like in a way, of course, we developed it all, all as, as soon as we started. So there's no comparison to another uh, theoretical version of, of City Hub. But uh, yeah, of course, we're saving a lot on staff. Like uh, our hotel in Copenhagen has 215 rooms and um, it's run basically one person in uh, the reception. And uh, in busy times, we have a second. But uh, so the costs are uh, definitely automatically mm. just uh, much lower. Yeah, Excellent. I think uh, that, that that's the most important uh, part of this. Uh, yeah. So the, the staff cost, yeah, it's it's uh, we don't we, of course we measure, for example, how many people uh, we use per guest stay. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so the, all those things are measured. But uh, yeah, in the end, of course, IT development costs are not just to build it once. You have to continuously update the the software. So that's definitely a cost uh, that you have to take into account. But not only that, also the hardware in the systems also gets outdated, like the tablet or the QR reader or all those kind of things. So th those are also kind of investments you have to take into account every couple of years if you want to keep the systems updated. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, know that we have extra costs there. But yeah, so far, it, it seems that it's still outweighing uh, uh, yeah, the, the staff costs mostly. And of course, creating a unique experience, which is also very important. Thanks, Sam. Stephen, has there been any tools, products, features, capabilities that has been missed so far in our conversation when it comes to looking at how hotels are utilizing IoT? So what we're talking about here is tracking and collecting data, right? So yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, there's there is um as both Vibhu and, and Sam have mentioned, you know, door locks of course, uh, is very, very key for access control, but also the other side of that is loss prevention, uh, right? I mean, keeping the door lock, uh, disabling that card after three uses, for example, uh, against any doors to prevent it from actually opening up the correct door and having the wrong person have access to that room. Um, that's always important. Uh, thermostats, you know, energy management, uh, as uh, as Vibu mentioned, uh, as well as him, uh, and lighting, you know, great great things, great applications of IoT. And these are the kind of the 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 low hanging fruit, so to speak, uh, for IoT these days to make sure that you can have a, a great impact on your property, um, increasing operational efficiencies, reducing costs, et cetera. 
but there's also other things, you know, that we're working on. IoT, of course, is evolving, right? So it's always changing. Mm -hmm. There's new devices coming along all the time. Uh, one of the latest ones, of course, that we stumbled across uh, was uh, smoke and vape detectors. You know, having a, having a guest uh, come into a hotel room and either use vape or smoke and having the costly remediation of cleaning that room afterwards. Um, something like that can really play uh, an impact in the guest room and can be reduced from smoke and vape detectors. Just having something in that room to let people know that, you know, somebody is uh, maybe smoking a, uh, something that they shouldn't be in that room that's going to have a skunky flavor afterwards, that they need to clean that room right away, right, and be able to uh, still um, uh, get to that guest and apply those charges while the guest is there versus after they've left and they've got no connection with them. Uh, of course, the other one is employee safety uh, buttons, right? Um, of course, here in, in North America, there's a, a large, uh, many, many states, uh, many provinces have laws with employee safety buttons, making sure that, you know, if employee does need assistance, does need help, that the that the um, uh, staff can get to them right away. That's obviously a, a very uh, large component of this as well. Um, and then... You know, we're we're seeing other things where you know we've got common connections to APIs and and so forth like that, where people can really build uh, through Ruckus Networks as the infrastructure can connect to these other devices like casting, um, like back a house, like you know room service and, and ordering and doing different things like that. So, um, really, IoT is is always evolving. Um, you know, and and we're we're lucky because we're in the center of it all, right? Every uh, every application, every IoT device that's out there uh, most commonly goes through the Wi-Fi and network infrastructure at that property. Uh, so, you know, we're seeing some great things. On that note, um, I want to pick your brain around emerging tech that perhaps excites you. And I want to talk specifically around any emerging IoT technologies that you believe, Stephen, will have a significant impact on hotel operations in the near future. What, what, what are you seeing? What do you believe in? Well, I mean, one of the most um, talked about items, of course, is, is virtual reality. Uh, you know, you have the all these devices which are now being used now more for business, the, the AI, uh, sorry, the, the augmented reality goggles and so forth like that that are coming out, um, you know, for for use for gaming or for business, etc. Uh, when you combine those with the uh, either the work or leisure traveler, um, you know, they, they require uh, an enormous amount of data and they require an enormous amount of bandwidth to keep going. Um, so these devices, of course, you know, are, we're going to see them more and more, just as we've seen a rise of gaming devices uh, mm -hmm. for the longer, uh, longer term stay hotels in the past, we're going to see augmented reality pick up. And, you know, you're going to need to have the right infrastructure at your property to support these devices. Uh, if you've got a an older network, uh, your guests aren't going to be happy because they can't get access to the the, the quality of the stream that they're looking for. Uh, across these devices. Um, mm. It's it's really about, you know, making sure that your infrastructure is sound uh, to be able to support everything. You know, when you're looking at Wi-Fi 7, et cetera, um, and the speeds that are required or, or available through that, um, there's an enormous amount of possibility. And I think we're going to see that even pick up quicker over the next several years because of the amount of uh, bandwidth that's available to these edge devices. Um, another one, of course, is is AI, right? I mean, um, Ruckus ourselves, we have uh, AI embedded in our Ruckus WAN gateway, uh, which we're providing to the hotel. That can actually offload a, a ton of uh, operational costs and so forth like that by having AI answer the questions on the on the chatbot, right? Yeah. Um, that can have AI be available to help the guests to help uh, analyze your usage, to help analyze trends, to help reduce even uh, issues with Wi-Fi across your property. So AI is going to be the next one that's driving uh, uh, in terms of technology as well. And that requires, you know, not only uh, bandwidth, of course, but it requires a lot of kind of uh, hyper localization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're a guest in a room and you're asking where's the closest pizza joint, it actually provides you with the you know a location that's nearby versus one that's nearby the cloud, uh, so, you know the office where the cloud is located at. Right, it's 
there's a lot of growth in that market as well. Mm -hmm. I want to bring Katie into the conversation here because I would imagine that there are going to be many hoteliers or perhaps asset managers that are listening into this webinar now who want to embark on this journey, integrating and deploying new tech, or they're already on that journey and they are facing quite a few challenges because a lot of hotels use legacy systems. So Katie, what best practices can hoteliers use to ensure that that is a smooth integration process? Uh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, yes, indeed. Although uh, what we see globally is that more and more hotels today are switching over to cloud-based uh, solutions and uh, cloud-based PMS uh, systems. Uh, there's uh, still a fair amount of partners and also in our portfolio who, who are still kind of stuck with their old legacy system. Um, eventually, obviously, they will also have to move and, and there are, you know, uh, legacy systems coming out with cloud-based solutions and so on. Uh, from our side, we uh, very carefully select our integration partners. We do not integrate with all the PMSs, and sometimes, unfortunately, we have to say no to hotels uh, because we want to ensure that the solution is working. If the customer chooses our solution, we want to make sure that everything is working, then they are buying the product, and they are paying for the product that actually works. Um, and also there is a lot of overheads when it comes to the integration. The integrations uh, themselves are quite challenging, uh, uh, time consuming, uh, as well as the, you know, the later up upkeep and monitoring and updating the solution to make sure it continues to work. And uh, now we take very uh, great pride in our onboarding process with the hotels. So when a hotel signs up with Hotel Buddy, uh, we actually have uh, multiple onboarding sessions with the hotel, uh, with different stakeholders, and we really map out uh, and kind of like get the understanding of the current hotel processes. And uh, we build our solution around the customer. So we don't expect the customer just to adopt kind of, you know, new ways of working because at the end of the day, it is kind of, you know, a change that we bring to the organization. It's going to be new for, for the teams. It's going to be new for their customers. Um, and I, I would really encourage the hotels when you go um, and choose to implement a new technology, then do work together with your technology partner. At the end of the day, you are partners. This is a relationship. Uh, so it cannot be just like, you know, one sided that the technology partner is supposed to just bring in the technology and it uh, miraculously starts working. Like both parties need to work uh, to make sure that, you know, a, it is a satisfying and long lasting uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, this is this is one of my, I, I would say, the best suggestions. Uh, choose your partners carefully and then put in the, the work and, and hours. And I think it also helps if the hotel has a designated uh, like a project team or a project manager when they uh, implement the new technology, because there is nothing worse than like kind of shared responsibility. And like then at the end, no one is responsible and and they cannot roll out the solution the way they would like it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Katie. Vibhu, you earlier provided uh, three examples. Um, so I think uh, F and B reception and sort of in room examples. Um, did you run into any challenges uh, when you were adding or integrating these solutions into your existing operations and, and management processes? Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Louise. Uh, first, we are very envious of Sim's position where it's a brand new portfolio that he's running, you know, because these technologies are so easy to adapt when you're building from the ground up. That's the best position to be in when you can adopt the solutions, especially with IoT, in the very outset of the building stages. Uh, the biggest challenge that probably comes out is, is the limitation of the legacy systems mm. and the limitations of the infrastructure that we have in the Wi-Fi, you know. Uh, and, and prime examples being door locking, a door locking solution can easily have a lifespan of 20, 25 years. Uh, it's a huge investment for a hotel to undertake to replace a door locking solution, especially if it's still 
kind of fit for purpose, but it's not ready for for today's technology. Uh, so those are the challenges that we are all the, that we are kind of eliminating. And as the investment is coming back uh, after a few tough years, as the investment is truly back into hotels, we are now starting to see a refresh of those legacy systems, refresh of the infrastructure. What we are doing with uh, with the with the Wi-Fi, uh, with with the solutioning that is going into it, those were those are the challenges that are really kind of holding us back. The solutions exist. Uh, we partner up with various uh, with various companies that have solutions around it. It's just you can only do so much at a given time, and mm -hmm. everything is a priority. Everything is is the right approach. Everything kind of takes us towards our ESG goals, towards our commercial uh, payback on these solutions. It's what do you prioritize? So we have we as an organization have taken the view that it has to guest for guest centric. It has to impact the guest in meaningful way. It has to make a decent, significant saving and kind of in, in the revenue or generate revenue as well. Uh, but the main challenges are around and our legacy systems, initial high cost of adoption. Uh, I think over the last year, they have starting to be a decline in, in, in kind of the costs that were needed. There's more, there are more kind of PL options available where you don't have to do a huge investment capital wise. So those challenges are starting to go away now. And I think the next one is probably around data security and privacy. You know, there's a lot of thought process that has to be put in when you're putting in IoT solutions. It's collecting a huge amount of data off your network. You know, who's looking after it? How are you managing it? How secure are you with those data policies? Those those are probably typically the three or four items that, that have been the most challenging for us. Mm -hmm. Stephen, can I ask you to, to build on top of this? And, and come at it from a different perspective here and, and talk us through the considerations um, that, that will be essential for hoteliers when they're looking at the, their infrastructure, their tech stack and their network, when they are looking at um, trialing new IoT solutions, either be it at a smaller level or even large scale uh, projects. Where, where would you advise hoteliers to start? Absolutely. And that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, with, with so many different uh, applications uh, on the market today, it's, it's, it's really, a, as I mentioned, a, a great question. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing I guess I would start with is, is looking at the infrastructure, right? And, and I know that, you know, I've, of course, we're a network infrastructure company, so that's that's really key to us. But if you don't have the proper foundation to support any of those IoT devices, really, you've got to you've got to go back and start from the ground up, right? Um, so, I guess the first thing I'd look at is, you know, what is the what is the wiring in your building? You know, what is the capacity of that wiring? Uh, are you looking at um, you know Cat six lines, which would be great? Are you looking at um, GPON network? You know, something like that for for increased capacity, um, and then the switching, uh, of course. After that, right? What is the capacity of those switches? And then one step back, looking at the, at the capacity of the Wi-Fi devices. Uh, do your Wi-Fi devices have BLE, Bluetooth, and beaconing built into them? That's key. Uh, if you don't, then you need a BLE, Bluetooth, beaconing capable um, Wi-Fi device uh, in in your room. Um, then we look at positioning. You know, where are you going to position that AP? Uh, there have been many, many cases where the AP has been deployed too far away from the door lock. Mm -hmm. And that creates a strain from the actual door lock because it has to almost push itself out for the connection um, to connect to the to BLE or the beaconing, and it drains its batteries. So then you're continuously replacing batteries, which doesn't really increase your operational efficiency if you're always, you know, supporting those uh, door locks and so forth, right? Um, so that's, of course, a, a huge component is, you know, what are you looking to do? Uh, how are you looking to accomplish it? What technology are you looking at using? And that's where we rely on, you know, our our network of partners and, and resellers to kind of use best practices to work as almost IT consultants, so to speak, to, to help you pick the right solution that they know and trust and to deploy it in a way that is going to be best for you and your property. Um, then we look at, of course, you know, once we have that infrastructure down and, and we know what you're looking to deploy, what are your means to success, right? What, How can we create this in perhaps a small POC, uh, you know, proof of concept? So we've we've done proof of concepts, uh, whether it be, you know, in a, in a number of hotel rooms uh, where we have the capability of, 
you know, temporarily turning on either IoT or turning on a, a Ruckus One uh, capacity for that property so they can test it, trial it for a limited time before they actually go ahead and pull the trigger on it. Uh, and we've also done full uh, POCs within uh, hotel deployments themselves. We've got um, a, a great POC running uh, in North America that uh, with IoT door locks, and and it essentially has increased uh, again operational efficiency from the property, but it's also just reduced the the amount of time that they spend supporting it. Uh, that battery uh, um, item that I mentioned earlier, uh, they can actually get notifications a week before the battery dies on the specific door lock, so that they're not replacing floors at a time of batteries because that's the cycle that they think they're replacing a door at a time. Right, which increases, mm -hmm. you know, uh, increases efficiencies, but reduces the amount of time that they're spent, you know, doing uh, operational items. Right, which is which is really really key, um, you know. So it's it's really large part of that, but there's also another emerging trend, which is you know, kind of green capabilities as well. Um, you know, obviously, uh, in a lot of the cases when when our partners deploy Ruckus Wi-Fi networks, our, our APs are so powerful that you know, we end up turning down the signal, turning down the power a little bit, right? Just so there's not too much SNR, signal to noise ratio. So it's not too loud of an environment uh, for Wi-Fi. I mean, that's, that's the power of ruckus. But the other thing that we're actually doing is in areas where maybe Wi-Fi isn't being utilized, say the conference area in the evening, uh, let's say it's uh, like in the late hours, for example, let's say it's, you know, maybe, maybe occupancy is low and there's certain floors or areas of the property that are not really in use. We're actually investigating into ways that we can reduce the power on those access points, which will, you know, be have a direct correlation to the property's power bill, right, and, and energy costs. So we're we're always exploring ways to, um, you know, to help the hospitality industry and our clients. We're purpose driven. We provide purpose driven networks, and hospitality is one of our key pillars uh, that we do that for. So we're we're really striving to always be better for hospitality. Hmm. It's reassuring to know that you can um, start small and then scale up. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. the proof of concept in one room compared mm -hmm. to uh, two hundred rooms of of your hotel. Um, I, I want to rephrase my next question slightly to, to Katie. Um, boutique lifestyle luxury hotels, a lot of our audience members are going to be independent properties. They're probably going to be wondering how they can invest in and embrace innovative technologies whilst trying to balance the affordability of such an investment um how can hoteliers those independent hoteliers strike that balance yeah absolutely you always have to understand the return on the investment right um what we are seeing amongst our partners is actually that um, uh, they are converting around 50 to 60 percent of their guests so meaning that actually the majority of the hotel guests if the digital solution is provided to them they choose to check in digital uh, way over the traditional way. Mm -hmm. um, now, when we convert this into numbers, then let's take uh, uh, an example of a hundred room hotel, right? So with a yearly average occupancy of 80%, 50% conversion rates, uh, our calculation shows that this hotel in average will save about 200 uh, labor hours uh, or reception working hours per month. So we are talking about saving one to one and a half jobs just right there. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, the hotels, uh, they can uh, benefit from increased re incremental revenue, which is coming from the extra service sales, the room uh, upgrades. And uh, one thing, of course, that is very hard to measure, but this is the, uh, the increased um, customer satisfaction rates, as I think uh, Vibu and Sam both brought out that uh, by utilizing this kind of like digital uh, self-service solution for the guests, it is actually not kind of taking them further away from the guests, but it actually helps them to personalize the guest journey and to offer a much better uh, experience for the guest because now all the mundane, you know, these kind of non-value adding tasks are being 
uh, digitalized and taken over by technology and the humans uh, that actually really make the difference in, in the hospitality industry do have the time to provide uh, the nice service and, and to provide nice human interactions. And this is what really matters. I think there's there's something to be said about upfront costs versus the revenue generating capabilities i think maybe we need to pivot that conversation to to as you've mentioned look at look at what can be generated as a result of it be it on the cost saving side but also what can be produced as a result another thing is that more and more hotels are adopting these technologies and they are going ahead you know and i think you know coming from the industry myself i know how very competitive the hotels are and how important it is also not to kind of miss that train. So can you just imagine, you know, you're, you have two hotels, similar hotels on the same street. One of them is utilizing all these technologies. They have much, uh, uh, you know, higher increased profitability. Uh, they can they take down their ADR, you know, sell, have much higher occupancy rates and so on. And you are just, you know, losing behind of them. and you know, and not to mention the staff shortages that, of course, the whole industry is experiencing, uh, regardless of the region. Mm. We've just touched on there about sort of financial um, challenges and opportunities. And I want to bring Sem back into the conversation here because we spoke off camera about um, about your B Corp uh, recent acc accreditation and how that is um influencing your or reshaping the relationship with your lender and so i want to bring this back into an iot smart hotel conversation here um but how are you quantifying the financial benefits of smart systems uh in terms of those operational cost savings but more importantly the value creation for stakeholders and if you wouldn't mind talking us through um the same conversation that we had <laughs> yeah, I think in in this case, it's not so much about costs. Uh, it's more about, well, I guess whenever it comes to energy, it's both costs and the environment, right? They often go together a lot. So, and in this case, uh, yeah, what you're talking about with the ABN AMRO, which is our uh, bank that does most of our financing, uh, they uh, after we uh, got the B certification, uh, which is a sustainability uh, certification for uh, companies that uh, go an extra step, let's say, for that part, um, they yeah they they came with a, uh, a proposal basically to us saying uh, we, we would like to give you a zero point three percent I think a discount on your interest rate if you can show us an increase of the score in the coming three years so uh, yeah, and then uh, that was a very interesting proposal and then of course the measurement uh, it becomes very important which you already do for B Corp I mean usually these kind of sustainability certificates are a, a, lot, a lot of measurements like endless forms of uh, measuring uh, every little detail and then, but then values come out and then you can clearly uh, uh, show uh, a, a raise let's say in, in certain values uh, in every aspect and uh, yeah, that and, and then automatically, of course, you have a financial benefit from that if there are partners and banks who are willing to do these kind of uh, things. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly, as Katie mentioned, the value creation for your guests as well. When you start to digitalize the guest experience and automate certain operational tasks or, or management systems, yeah. you can you you can you're empowering the guests to almost create their own stay and experience whilst on your property. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's uh, it's also uh, uh, like uh, Vibo said that uh, we are of course from the ground up built this way, mm. so it's much easier for us. It's actually the only reason why it's even possible for us, I would say, to develop all these systems because they, we can make them very lean. We've developed a concept that is very simple and lean. Like we don't have a restaurant, for example. So, so there's a lot of uh, uh, things involved in making this for us possible. Mm -hmm. But I do think, of course, in the, in a traditional hotel world, the, yeah, you'll probably have to rely much more on external uh, uh, partners and, and see if you can integrate them uh, in mm -hmm. the right way. That's the big challenge. But for us, uh, yeah, it's it's easier to uh, to justify the cost of the development and the uh, mm -hmm. result delivers. 
Bibu, I would like to bring you back in here, um, almost like a, a comparison, as I mentioned, of, of the two different sort of models uh, from, from an operational side. Um, how do you see RBH leveraging IoT advancements in the future? You mentioned a couple of standalone properties within the portfolio, but are you exploring any other possibilities, scenarios, tools to yeah. further optimize operations? So I think we've touched during during the, the course of this webinar, I think we have touched on most items that 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 have that kind of found its way into the industry. Uh, one of the unique situations we faced early on in this year was at one of our London properties. Uh, they, they hosted an e-gaming uh, event at the property and they took the, the event took something like 80 rooms at the hotel. And we suddenly realized our Wi-Fi is just not good enough and we had to cable up the hotel and actually run temporary fiber cables into bedrooms to give these gamers opportunity. So I think the, the one thing that we have started to see as, as demand grows is these unique environments are starting to be created, which use hotels as a temporary base and hoteliers need to be ready for it. You know, that's that's one area where IT is really coming to its prominence, better and more controlled data delivery, data usage at the guest levels. And for these specific, very, very unique situations where you have to cater to a very set segment of guests who will utilize a lot of your bandwidth coming to the hotel. It was so much so that you're all consumed and, and you have to make them provisions. Uh, the key areas remain, it's, it's a lot to do with AI, which is coming through. That That is going to be a game changer, as I think everybody on this call has probably been in discussions or sat in panels or been in the room where it's uh, where it's, it's it's the next iteration of the internet, right? It's, it's going to change how we physically do business and how we, how we operate our hotels, how we service our guests. Uh, key things uh, around automated check-in, check-out. It's it's nearly here. Uh, the technology exists. It's just a legacy systems that is stopping its true true adoption. Uh, smart rooms. We are starting to do that a lot better in our mm -hmm. new built hotels. In our new built hotels, it's it's the starting point rather than an afterthought. And then it's more about uh, preventative maintenance in our legacy hotels. In our in our hotels that are a bit more aged as a, as an asset set. Uh, IoT is really helping with the pre preventative ma maintenance. You know, it's it's literally becoming predictive and more more managed. Uh, as as Stephen said, you know, you can you can target a door. You can know a door lock has a fault even before a guest goes up to that door. That's the kind of stuff that is that we are starting to see. Uh, inventory management is another is another position uh, in our busier F and B hotels. Uh, that's where we are starting to see a lot of inventory management systems going, which are all based on IOTs and the backups. And uh, I think uh, the next one is is probably around housekeeping and maintenance, uh, personalization, and guest deliveries. You know, how do you how do you make it better at a five star hotel? How do you make the service even more better and personalized so that when a guest reappears to stay in the hotel, it's exactly as they would have left it, right? It's, it's giving that personalization to that degree. And those are probably the key things, at least those, those are where we would like to see, you know, better adoption ourselves and in the industry as well. Super. Thank you, Vivi. What a great note to end on. I always like to get out that crystal ball and, and take a look at what the future might hold and where the industry might be moving to. But I can see that we've got four minutes on the clock and I've still got some slides that I would like to run through. Um, so I'm just going to say a very brief thank you to, to Vivi, to Stephen, to Katie and to Zem for their insights. And I will flag here that we're going to keep our webinar open um, at the end for an extra two minutes to allow our audience members time to follow up on any of the links that we have popped into the chat today, um, including the LinkedIn profiles of our speakers for you to ask your burning questions and to carry on that conversation. So to flag the next um, webinar in our series, we're taking a very short um, break over the summer and we are going to be back on Monday, September the 9th for a discussion or a debate around ADRs can only go so far. So picking up on that revenue generating opportunities um, outside of the hotel rooms on properties. So we'd love to see you there and you can register by um, clicking on the link that has been popped into the chat.
And whilst we take a break over the summer, I would encourage all of you to take a look at our past webinar archives. They can be found on the Boutique Hotel News web uh, website. Uh, the link has also been popped into the chat. We have um, discussions on there from investment and finance to experiential hotelier to F&B. You name it, we've covered so much on there. We've been going for four years strong now, so there will be a topic there that entices um, or will align with uh, most people that have been uh, tuning in today. So do take the time. Um, there's plenty of insights to be to be found there. And to flag an in-person event that we're hosting this September on the 18th and 19th of September here in London at King's Cross, the Urban Living Festival, which brings together all the um, hospitality and living asset classes under one roof. That's hotels service departments, short-term rentals, co-living, co-working, student housing, senior living. It's all going on. And once again, we'd love to see you there. Tickets are on sale um, and you can find out further information on the link that has been popped into the chat. Now, if you're keen to work with us, um, either across our digital webinars like today or our in-person events, please do get in touch. Um, my colleague Piers, his details are on your screen and also in the chat. We would love to hear from you. And all that's left for me to say is thank you. So firstly, thank you to Stephen, to Vibu, to KD and to Sem. Thank you to Agilisys and to Ruckus. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. I certainly have. And I very much look forward to seeing you once again back in September. Well, enjoy the rest of your afternoons and we'll see you all very soon. Take care. Hello, we are International Hospitality Media or IHM for short. IHM is the number one brand to engage with decision makers in hospitality and real estate. Our four multimedia brands lead their respective sectors with breaking news, comments, trends and opinion across a variety of multimedia solutions. We provide an inspirational community to connect people through world-class events, webinars, podcasts, award schemes and much more. But let us share our story of who we are and what we do. Over 10 years ago, Pierce and George had a light bulb moment to provide expert opinion, comments and low-cost digital content. And so they went on a journey over the past decade, creating media platforms to serve the hospitality and real estate industries. We now have an engaged audience with a reach of over 60,000 monthly visitors across our website, 48,000 of our email database across all the sectors, and over 67,000 across our social channels. Everything we do believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. We make things simple and very easy to work with us. And we're a friendly bunch too. We offer creative solutions to help you achieve your business goals. Read, watch, listen, meet. With IHM, contact us for a chat today. Just look at some of the brands we have worked with recently. 